All right, folks, this is a Stinger tactical whip that has been sent to me for review, and review it I shall. In fact, I'll get straight to the tests after showing you the close-up. So it's got this Kubaton-like steel grip with a steel point designed for glass breaking, and of course it has defensive applications as well. And then we've got a steel cable attached to it. It's this, it's this nasty kind of sting that just doesn't go away. Oh, okay, finally it starts to, <laughs> to get better. Yeah, um, considering how light that was, <laughs> if, if you were to just boom, just put your body weight into it and, and give it your, your everything, this would be just exceedingly painful. I've literally not started using my arm. It's <sighs> all wrist. <laughs> That's all that was. I'm not using my arm. <laughs> and I could tell it actually absorbed a lot yeah. because the way the coat is hanging, it, it basically like the tip of it actually went into the, the loose hanging coat, which of course absorbs quite a bit. Do proper safety. We, we need this for science. <laughs> That's painful. Mm. That was 50, so again, and, and maybe not even fully 50 because you're, I mean, you seem a little bit less hesitant on that one. Whew. Yeah, this, this hurts, this hurts a lot. Oh, and that, that wasn't even like dedicated tip strike, like because the worst, the worst would be if you strike like this, basically, you know, just the tip, that would be the worst. That would be extremely painful. Okay, so let's just look at what other options you have. So say I'm this close, this is too close, yeah, exactly, there you go. So you can jam that in the throat. Let's say you, you get your arm free. Which one? Uh, this one, so, so let, right. let's say you, you get this, but you're mm -hmm. clearly out of range for, for a proper one. So let's say it's pretty tight. Can you, can you do anything this way? Okay, without the spike, just. See if you can whip. Uh, yes, I can, but I'm not going to because it's going okay, whip, right at whip, the face. Okay, whip on the, on the back or on the back of the leg. <clears throat> okay, yeah, yeah, so you can... Basically, I need to control this. Oh, you think so? <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, you need to control this like a knife plus some because they, they could still... I mean, this would be pretty limp wristed, but as with everything, it's not a guarantee. No tool or weapon or anything will ever guarantee that you emerge from an attack unscathed, but is this, this is a pretty good deterrent. If you try That's the other, th yeah, if, if you aim for the face, like I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to take a 5% or to the face, let alone commit it. And that's the other thing, uh, you're not going to just stand there. So let's say I rush at you and you, you go backwards as you, like, don't stand still, but just, just, yeah, this. Like you can, you can try to keep me at bay because you can swing that thing constantly, and this is going to going to make it way harder to to approach. The skull analog is not really going to show damage like this, and soft tissue damage, but uh, that face would be split open and, and bleeding, obviously, into the eyes. Well, it's just not the right test medium for this. You can imagine getting struck in the face with this. Hard would be unbelievably painful and dangerous, but um, the zombie head just, he can't see it. This would all be soft tissue damage. This wouldn't damage bone. I don't think you could ever break a skull with this. Well, unless... Well, this is very thick foam on top, way more soft tissue than there normally is on top of a skull. So I can't feel any damage to the skull. Maybe there is like a, a crack or something 
minor, well, I shouldn't say minor, it wouldn't be minor in real life, but potentially with a very powerful strike, you might be able to break bone, but that's really not what this tool is for. This is really mainly a pain compliance tool. And you can imagine just, just this, you know, just a lazy little flick. Oh, that would be horrifying. Same with the head. And um, I just noticed it, it whipped back and hit me in the arm, but by that point, it has lost most of the energy. So it's not really, like it, it might hurt a little bit if it hits you, but it's not gonna be dangerous. Ah, damn it. The camera has sunk into the snow and I didn't notice. So all those shots were completely out of frame. Sorry about that, guys. So I do notice I get whipped quite a bit by the point myself, which is not ideal. That's usually a problem with flexible weapons. So uh, what I'm worried about is if you strike something hard and the point bounces back and hits your eyes, then you have a problem. So it would be a lot safer to strike from further away when you hit with just a point. So there isn't much to, it's not really gonna bounce back. It's just going to follow through, like swipe it and follow through as opposed to hit it, flex and bounce back. The problem with that, of course, is then you're left with the same issues as a baton. A baton has an ideal reach, you know, an ideal point of impact. If you're any closer, it's not really gonna do it. This, I mean, this could still whip around. If you're that close and you strike, you can see it's kind of whipped around. I should probably show that on slow-mo. There's one situation where I can imagine it being more dangerous, and that's if you, if you hit the jugular. Like a hard hit to the jugular could maybe rupture the blood vessels and cause internal ble bleeding. Maybe. I notice almost every time I strike with it, it whips back and the point uh, hits me in the crook of the arm. But uh, yeah, if you, if you strike just with the, with the end part, and man, I'm really stripping that, that protective cover. I'm assuming it's not meant to be used on hard targets. So this is abuse, but I mean, it still functions. All right, let's see what the more dangerous end can do. I can't get a good shot of that. So there's basically little cones punched into the bone analog. So it does penetrate, not all the way into the cranial cavity, but it definitely damages the bone analog. So this would be very nasty to be hit with. I don't think lethal, unless you were to do really go full berserker mode on it, I guess. Okay, I'll try it on the side of the head. I'll have to do it with my weak hand because of the current setup here. Okay, this one did crack the skull enough for, for the fluid to seep out a little bit. There we go. Okay, that clearly made it in. Okay, so it can get through the thinner bone of the temple. Okay, the sun is coming exactly from the wrong direction, so. It's hard to show this properly. This is what it did. And there's the goop coming out. All right, so what do I like about this thing? Well, it's appropriately named. The stinger, sting it does for sure. 
it is quite painful. So this is really a pain compliance tool first and foremost. Even though you have a potentially lethal option in the form of that steel point right there that you could use against somebody's head, I don't think it's as lethal as a hard baton strike to the head. And even when using it as a improvised morning star, it's, it doesn't hit as hard as you might think. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would absolutely not want to take this to the head by any means. It may very well knock somebody out, give them a concussion, etc. But really, this is mainly a, a deterrent. That's how I see it, because you don't want to get hit with this thing, and this doesn't escalate it to the point of, you know, knives are out, guns are out, etc. It's pretty compact because it's flexible, but you get a good amount of reach. So I can strike Bob from all the way over here. No problem. It's pretty fast. Um, also, let's say I'm dealing with a very tall attacker. This would be a pretty awkward angle if I wanted to reach the face with a punch. I mean, you can, you can do it, but this is way easier. I can, even, even from here, I can whip him all the way on top of the head if I wanted to, no problem. And considering how painful even light wrist powered hits can be, just imagine how much this would suck. Here's just full committed body engagement, follow through all the way. I can use the point of course, and I can, even if I'm this close, I can still deliver pretty nasty strikes. So what are the issues? Well, for one, pain compliance is not a guarantee. You know, everybody has a different pain threshold and pain tolerance. What brings one person to their knees in agony, another might just shrug off and, and keep coming. Plus, if, you, if you're attacked by somebody who is on who knows what drugs, they might not even feel it. There's nothing structurally debilitating about this. The other problem is carrying it. And this comes in, in two versions. For one, just the ease of carry. So this is obviously not something you just stick in your pocket. Another option would be to wear it basically like a belt. So stick it through the belt loops and then the clip could perhaps go in the side of the pocket here. Concealability depends on what you're wearing. If I, if I close this up, then it may print here a little bit, but nothing too bad. And from here you can draw it pretty quickly. So not that big of a deal, but it's, it's less convenient than some other things. Like a, a baton, in my opinion, is easier to carry because you just have it in you know, a, a belt pouch hanging down and it's, it's not really going to inconvenience you much. Uh, this here is a bit more of a hassle, I feel, particularly the, the point here limits where you can wear it because you wouldn't want to have it pushed into your belly or anything. But that's pretty minor. My main concern is where could you legally carry this? Because in a lot of places, this is not going to be okay with lawmakers because if, if you are in a place that is restrictive with regards to weapon carry and, and self-defense laws, then there's, there's no way this is going to be acceptable. At least I can't think of too many places where you could defend yourself with this and end up in court and it would go over well. In fact, if it does, then chances are the laws are probably such that you can legally carry a firearm or other weapons as well. It wouldn't be a home defense tool either. Although I have to say, on one occasion when I went out here in the middle of the night to check on something because the light here went on, the motion sensor, so I just wanted to check just in case, I did grab this because the most likely thing you're going to encounter here is animals. And, uh, you know, if you don't want to kill the animal, just, just chase it off, then this is likely a good choice, depending on what you're facing. So I'm a bit conflicted here. I like the design. I definitely think it's effective for its intended purpose. And of course, I also understand the challenges involved in designing a self-defense tool, you know, particularly with regards to laws and all that. You can't account for everything. So it's definitely an effective non-lethal tool and one of the better ones I've seen. I just, I can't really imagine too many people being able to carry this in public and getting away with it on you know a legal basis so there is that 
there's of course also novelty use. You know, if you if you just want something to, I don't know, whack water bottles or watermelons or who knows what with in your backyard and just just play around with it, basically, it's not expensive. So I could see that or just recreational use basically or in case you encounter a stray coyote or something uh, this should definitely persuade them to leave you be and that's about it i can't think of anything else to point out about this hope you found it interesting thanks for watching link will be down below of course and uh, have a good one folks